Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. something very futile with my life that uh, absolutely does nothing to enhance it. Well, outside of the fact that I get to talk to a bunch of people that I kind of consider my friends, if you hear the, uh, I don't know if you can hear the air conditioner in the background, but if you can, it's because it's getting to be air conditioning time, and there's no such thing as a silent air conditioner. Oh, boy. Anyway, hey, we got a good show for you. A little bit later, we're going to be talking with our citizens panel. But right now, we're going to go over and talk to somebody who we love talking to every couple of weeks. The loss. <laughs> loss. <laughs> we go out to uh, Oregon. <laughs> I was going to go Los Oswego, Lake Oswego, where we find Ronnie Bennett. She's an ex-wife. That's the bad thing. The good thing is she happens to be a great ex-wife. So, anyway. Hi, Ronnie. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good. I'm okay. You know, tired all the time. I always feel tired. Is that a, a, something about getting old? How you old just... are you? Hmm? How old are you? 79. Well, okay. You know, you've been around that long. Your body's probably tired. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, and I drink coffee like crazy, and that doesn't seem to help. But, you know, I'll... I'll I wish I'd brought my coffee with me. It's not here. Oh, well. Here, you want some of this? Um, <laughs> Don't I wish. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you been? How are you feeling? Getting I'm along. fine. She's getting along singing a song. Uh, She's sort of, uh, yeah. It's <laughs> more or less. Uh, uh, you know, you write a blog. She writes a blog called timegoesby.net. That's where you'll find it. Uh, and uh, she it's basically her her uh, what can we call it her specialité is uh, is getting older mainly because she's doing it and I guess anybody who gets older is kind of an expert at it you know well the, I'm not really not and that's why the subtitle of my blog is what it's really like to get old because in our lifetime in America this isn't true in most other countries Discussing getting old, getting tired, as you mentioned, um, things going wrong, all the stuff that goes on with old people, we weren't allowed to talk about, oh, we can't talk about things that aren't cheerful, you know? Yeah. Nobody would let you talk about it. So you don't know about all kinds of things that aren't necessarily very treatable or even need treatment um, because, hey, that's about getting old, and so you can't do that in public. And what I have done over 15 years, I didn't start out to do this. I didn't know I was doing it, but it's become this. Much of it, thanks to my readers, is it's a safe place for people to come and talk about those things that you can't talk about with your friends who won't let you talk about having wrinkles or, you know, or things not working the way they used to and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's a safe place and has been for years now where people can talk about those things. And it's even these days you get rushed through the doctor's office so quickly that, you know, if you've got a pain in your toe, well, maybe that's not quite as important as you can't breathe this week. Right, you know, right, something. exactly. Well, you know, I mean, like I have numb feet and I find out that a lot of people my age have numb feet. Neuropathy, you know, Neuropathy, yes. you know, and uh, uh, I, I just go, you know, it's like uh, you always used to say that the Betty Davis said they're getting a lane for sissies, and that's really, I'm, it's my motto. You know, I mean, uh, it, 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 there's, there are little pains, there are aches, there's this, there's that, you know. I, every year I notice that the, the pill box where I put my pills, uh, <laughs> it's, it's starting to overflow now. You know, where before it was like one pill. Hey, take the cholesterol <laughs> pill. Okay, good. You know, so <coughs> I'm like a pill factory now, you know, and I go to 
Yeah, pick I have yeah. a lot of them too. You know, I got a new one. One of the big things about cancer and chemo is that both of them reduce your appetite. Chemo does all by itself. Cancer does all by itself. And of course, together, um, that's they they suppress your appetite. Mm -hmm. And of course, the last thing you want to do if you have cancer is lose weight, lose muscle mass, because then you're going to die. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I have to fight it constantly because I'm never, ever hungry. And so I must have mentioned this on our little show before, that sometimes I just perfectly know that if I put one more spoonful or one more forkful in my mouth, I'm going to throw up. And so I can't, and then... You know, weight goes down. You can, I can lose a pound, a pound and a half overnight if I don't eat enough the day before that yeah, day. Yeah. So, and, so, uh, isn't the, so that's very difficult. Yeah. Um, and then what? I got a new pill, and I said thanks a lot. All I need is one more pill for that damn little box. I've come to hit two of them. I keep one for morning, one for evening. Yeah. And uh, and uh, it turned out that this was a pill. All this time, two years, I've been going to this place. All of this time, I've been complaining about I don't have any appetite and I have to force feed myself. Uh, they gave me this pill. It's the tiniest little pill you ever saw. And I'm supposed to cut it in half. <laughs> 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 and uh, guess what? I wake up hungry in the morning. I haven't done that in a couple of years. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. You know, well, you it's know, still not a maybe, big deal, maybe. but... It's better than it was before. At you, least I don't feel sick when I think about food. You know, I went and lost all that weight, like 60 pounds, and I'm beginning to wonder if that was a good idea, that if, in fact, you aren't fatter, it takes longer for you to die from some kind of wasting disease. Uh, but yeah. yeah, but not many people die of a wasting disease. Of course, I remember there was a uh, there was a, a gym in San Francisco that got assailed for their advertising campaign, which read... Uh, when they when the aliens come, they're going to eat the fat ones first. <laughs> so, uh, so here, come in. that's why you lost the weight, huh? Yeah, that's why I lost the weight. Uh, I did tell you, there's a wonderful nurse where I go, at the oncology lab, who's in her early 60s, <clears throat> and she's been working in oncology her entire career. Yeah. And when I first started, you know, she said, eat cheese, eat eggs, eat meat. I need lots of protein, lots of fat. Mm -hmm. All the stuff I avoided eating all my life. All right. of a sudden, she wants me to right. eat a whole lot of it. <clears throat> and I complained to her once that this didn't seem like a very healthy diet to me, that there were hardly any greens in it, because if I fill up with vegetables, there's no space for fat and, and protein. Right. And she said to me, she said, Ronnie... The, how did she put it, Ronnie? Cancer will kill you long before the diet will. Do what I tell yeah, you. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so you know, but I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I just, um, uh, you know, I just, I just notice as you get older that I, I finally, re as I said, I realize why sometimes old old people are accused of being grouchy, and now I know why they're grouchy. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're in constant forms of just small little niggling pains you know what i'm saying it's yes, nothing it's like there's not anything that's uh, overwhelming where the doctor goes well you're going to have to have an operation you know didn't have anything like that but you know it, it's it's ridiculous i i just um um well anyway enough of my complaining you know, I'll tell you what I did do i went to something the other night and i walked out after a half hour uh, and you could have gone there. You could have been there. You were welcome to be there at that party. It was the 43rd year of uh, WPLJ, which they're putting out to pa oh. which they're putting out to pasture. They sold it to a religious organization who's going to turn it into God music all the time. And uh, so they held a big goodbye for WPLJ. Are they going to get rid of the call letters? Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, and uh, I lasted about a half hour before I had to leave. Because to begin with, I was there with somebody who had been there on and off for a period of 20 years, later on, after us, okay? And he knew everybody. 
and I didn't know anybody. And the people we worked with, except for Kareem Baldassandro, you remember the name? She was the music director. Say it again. Kareem Baldassandro. Oh, she yeah, she was she was a music director. She came up to me. So it was Ann Sternberg for a while. Yeah, but that was it. You know, uh, that and Jimmy Fink, who I don't think was in that first wave that was there. Uh, we were in the first wave. We were in the beginning of that whole thing. And it was like I almost, I didn't exist. You know, because I wasn't part of their top four, you know, their more popular music, uh, more mainstream format, you know. But I, but I went back to the beginning. And I just, I walked out depressed. I just, you know. I went, fuck this, you know. I, I, well, you know, life goes on and different things become important. And I think that when we say it's not like the good old days, us old folks. Yeah. Well, that's how it but works. If you're, if, if you're saying goodbye to something and you're holding a party to celebrate that period of time, don't you go back to the very beginning and say, hey, these are the people who were there? But it's like we didn't even exist. You know, well, because we were that pro- we were that wacky we were that wacky progressive format. You know. <laughs> ah yes, we did take a lot of grief for that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, I it's just that I would figure that I would go in and they go, oh, Alex Bennett, you were part of the first wave. You know, you were the very beginning of what we are now celebrating the end of. All right. And then, uh, so I well, I just left. I just I said it's too noisy. It's too crowded. And it's too... Uh, you know, you sound like such a cranky old no, man. No, no, but this wasn't being a cranky old man. I would, have, I would have put up with that if there was some feeling that I mattered in this group. And by the way, of the original personalities, I was the only one who showed up. And there are other ones still, still alive. Vince Kels is still alive. Michael Cascuna is still alive, you know. So I was, I was the only one who showed up. You know. Well, you know, you don't know what condition they're in or how much it means to them. I have a lot of jobs that don't mean a thing to me and two or three that I love. Well, you know what? I, I, my whole thing was I didn't want to go, and I didn't want to go because of the very reason it turned out to be, that I, I, I felt it would not be my party, okay, it would, it, or that I would be part of that party, that it, this was going to be a party for all the people who, you know, were there later, you know, and and... I think that's probably what those other people felt too, and that's why they didn't show up. But, well, you don't know that. Maybe you know, been uh, uh, I left, and then um, my friend uh, Albert, who came in for this thing, um, uh, sent me a picture, and they put up a photograph of me with John and Yoko, and he says, "See, they they celebrated you." And I wrote back, and I said, "They weren't celebrating me. If John and Yoko weren't in that picture, they wouldn't have shown it." <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's okay. Yeah. You know, that was then and this is now, and the yeah. world is a whole new place. Well, you know, I... so and, You know, that's but, one of the well, interesting things about being yeah. old in the younger generation. Yeah. Is that we bring along uh, yeah. uh, with us the memories of our uh, youthful adults, mm-hmm. put, Yeah. and we think it hasn't changed in 40 years or 50 years. It's... The world has nothing oh, oh, to do oh, with oh, no, what No, I understand it. Look, I understand that. By the way, I got to tell you something. This is amazing. I worked for two major radio stations in New York City, WMCA, right, and WPLJ. What did WMCA become? I'm sorry, what does what? What did WMCA become? What is it to this uh-huh. day? Huh? I have no idea. It became a religious station. And now this one is. And now this one's going to church music. I'm a fucking pariah, <laughs> you know. I wonder if they're getting rid of the call letters because they stood for, or at least we said they did, white, white port and lemon, lemon juice. juice. No, I think they got rid of it because they wanted to give their own call, I don't know, K God or, <coughs> you know, W God or whatever. I don't know what they're going to call it. Uh, but... Uh, and I also, everybody was going, oh, it's going away. Oh, the legacy of this station. And I'm thinking, what fucking legacy? This thing has had five formats over that time. You know, it was WPLJ. That was the call sign. But the nature of the station kept changing and evolving with the time or doing what it felt it had to do in order to survive. So what are you, what are you, what are you moaning about? Are you moaning? Which format are you moaning about? You know? 
And so this whole idea, oh, the WPLJ is going away. Eh, it's, you know, all things go away with time. So clearly time. there were some people there who were old enough to remember what you remember. Not really, no. No. Well, then who, why would uh, I mean, I have, been, have been there to lament it not being I, that I was way being anymore. introduced by my friend uh, 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 Albert uh, as, oh, this is Alex Benton. And he was with uh, WPLJ in the very beginning. And they go, oh, really? You know, I mean, like they didn't hear of it. And then as the evening went on, he just said, this is my friend Alex, because it didn't seem to matter to anybody. And uh, I, after a while, I got to feel like his plus one. Well, that's okay, too. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yes, sir. I think you're making more of this than you should. Well, I was just hurt. But people I, just can't remember what they weren't alive for, Alex, you know? You know, um, uh, actually, if I think about it, I'm more proud of uh, Midnight Blue than I am of uh, PLJ. Okay? If I had to say I did something in New York, only because, you know, of the nature of the fact that we were tweaking whiskers on the cat. Wasn't Howard Stern there when we were first there? No. No. Howard Stern was at, um, where was he? WNBC is where he was, but not while we were there. Okay. He came later. He came after, I think after I left New York. No, no, no. He, he was there while I was in New York. He had to be. Uh, and he went from WNBC over to, I can't remember what the name of the station was, but uh, Mel Karmazin uh, hired him over there. And, right. uh, you know, turned him into a star. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, Did you see the interview with him this week? Which one? The big one. It, it, I guess it's in the Times from yesterday. Oh, I, no, I didn't see that. No. <clears throat> no, he's got a book out, so he, you know. Well, that's okay. Well... Larry, don't put that down. You can write a book, and uh, then I'll, you can go do those I, shows. I got a whole story for you about that book. Um... Uh, okay. It, 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 it's too personal a story for somebody else, so I'll let them tell the story. But somebody else thought uh, uh, that book and got it published and all that, and now is not getting any credit for it. So uh, who's not who's not getting credit? Well, for I'm it? not gonna. I don't want to say. Okay, uh, but uh, there's somebody that we know who came up with this whole idea, pitched it to the book companies for Howard, got it published, and is not getting any credit. For having even been part of it, so it ra they rarely are. The I mean, that's a broker, and they're rarely in the book, you know, named in the book industry. Yeah, well, this is not a broker. This is a guy who was uh, a biggie. At he behaved. He was acting as a broker. He was acting as a broker in the yeah. business. Yeah, and you don't get mentioned for having made a phone call. You know. <laughs> well, you do get mentioned by somebody who is respectful of you and is happy you did this for him. You know what I'm saying? You're having a terrible Thursday morning. I'm having a horrible Thursday morning. <laughs> what, what the fuck? Come on. You write about old people. You got one here. What the hell? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, me too, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it is what it is. I just, you know, I, d I don't like talk about, about the idea of, uh, emphasize the positive. I mean, there's even some Disney song about it. Accentuate, Accentuate the positive. positive. Johnny Mercer wrote that. Okay, well, it was, <laughs> you know, in some Disney movie or something. But, um, you know, mostly I just want, um, um, I, I, I just don't think about that much. Yeah. Um, and I don't, well, you know, I used to jump out of bed that's, you know, a lot of that's thanks to you, that you always had 6 a.m. radio shows, so we had to get up at 4.30. Yeah. And that hung on for most of the rest of my life, that yeah. I'd wake up that early no matter what. And, and well, I afterward, after we broke up, I also had a bunch of um, TV shows that I worked on for a few years that went on the air at 7 a.m. or something like that. So I have lots of practice at going to bed early, getting up early. But now when I wake up after a good night's sleep, eight, even nine hours, God, it's hard to get out of bed. <laughs> and I used to just yeah. right out of the bed and yeah. ready to go. <laughs> well, the thing is, I find that at my age, uh, I, I, I'm nursing enough grudges that my nipples hurt. You know, so. Uh, is, is that a reference I should know or you just made that up? I just made that up here. Okay. But I think somebody else probably said it before me, I would imagine. It's an obvious joke. My son tells me mm -hmm. 
that recently when he... You know, that sounds weird to me when you say that. My son tells me. Yes. He tells me that um, his son, my grandson, when he woke him up to get ready for breakfast and preschool, Mm -hmm. asked him, he said, Daddy, why does... It was such a cute way to put it. Why do, why does morning come so fast or something close to that? And it does seem to when you first wake up. He's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like you just fell asleep. Well, uh, well I notice, and this, uh, again, is, I guess, part of getting old. When I used to wake up in the morning, I would do this. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Now I go, fuck. <laughs> you know, I used to think coffee was important to get me going. Yeah. Nothing compared to now. It is crucial now. Getting through this 30-minute show we do yeah. that I forgot to bring my coffee cup over here with me is driving me crazy. Well, you only got about six more minutes, so hold on. <laughs> hold on. Uh, yeah, I the coffee it doesn't do anything for me. I'm doing Starbucks Plus. I wouldn't go near Starbucks, but that's another well, story. Well, this is one of those, you know, I put them in the, <coughs> and it's, it's plus, and it's got double the caffeine. doesn't do crap for me. but sure does for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, I mean, uh, this the whole process of getting old, you say that not everybody's an expert on it, even though they're getting old. Oh, no, I don't think so, because we haven't been able to talk about it, Yeah. and a lot of <clears throat> Sorry, um, and because we're sl slowly beginning to do that, because of course the number of old people is growing, and people know a market when they see it. Yeah. Um. So, um, it there's a little bit more to it, but almost all of it is is how positive it is, how wonderful it is to get old, and how terrific it is, and you can now go. They, you always see photo, photographs online of very movie star attractive old people with gray hair walking on the beach. You know, you've seen all those yes, photos. Yes, right, right. And, uh, and that, that's what getting old is like. It's not. And it's okay to talk about what's wrong. And nobody, people are really nasty about that to people who try to talk about it. And someone, <clears throat> someone pointed out on my blog this week is that young mothers, they get together and they talk about raising children or if they're even going through the pregnancy. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I apologize. And, uh, and if they go through a divorce, you go to your friends who've been there and you talk about that. Mm -hmm. Your parents die. You've now got, you're at the age where other friends' parents are dying. So you get together with that group and talk about it then, uh, when you get there. And there's no reason why you shouldn't do that about getting old. You did it for all those other major events in life, but now you're at a brand new one that the culture still says, yeah. no, 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 nobody's old. Old is wonderful. Well, no, it's not. I can't get out of this chair. Yeah, but what, they, yeah. what, what I've been saying is that when, when we, as we get older, uh, the topic of conversation at dinner changes from... In, at various ages to our age where invariably you start talking about medical plans you start talking about something that's bothering you or ailing you uh, but that's what goes on in old age in the same way that you know if you're pregnant there comes a point where no you can't get out of chair unless somebody pulls you out well this is know? why this is why i don't believe in god if there were a god as you got older things would get easier and better if there was a compassionate but a God, God gets better. Huh? It doesn't mean the pains aren't there. It doesn't mean that you aren't slowed down and can't walk as fast as you used to, or carry as many groceries all at once in from the car or anything. But there are plenty of things that are better about being. I look back at things that worried me for days, that may that I even went to shrinks for now and again. And what the hell was I doing? That's nothing. Yeah. You didn't, I didn't need to make such a big deal of that. It wasn't that important, but you thought it was at the time. Oh, I like it. I like the last words of Marlon Brando as he was dying. And he said, what was that all about? Yeah, well, I kind of feel <laughs> that way, but we don't know he really said that. So, 
be, be very wary of people's last words. They almost never, never what well, they said. Uh, if, wanted let's them say, to say he didn't say it. It's a great story because okay, I imagine okay. that you do look back on your life and go, what the fuck was all that about? I mean, I'm amazed now that I look back on it, how fast it's gone by. And when I was a kid, it moved at a snail's pace. You know, my next birthday was eons away. Now my mm -hmm. next birthday is any day now, you know? <laughs> I know. So, I mean, that's, that's how things start to change. And uh, uh, Although I've discovered I don't, I, it hasn't happened often enough that I can have a reasonable conversation about it yet, although I will when I work it out. But just in the last two or three or four weeks, there have been some periods of time. I was going to say perhaps it's when I'm doing tedious things like mm -hmm. filing paper that you need to keep for some reason or something. Um, but when I'm doing that sort of thing, or you know, there were, I was making something on the stove and it, you had to stir it all the time, and my God, is that boring. And time just creeps by just creeps by in a way I haven't felt in years and almost always I felt like what you're describing and this is the first time in many years that I felt that, that time was dragging for me really wow hey listen I don't know if that has any significance yet but there you are I look down at the clock guess what another wonderful time has passed here and we've <laughs> we've talked that we've in case people mind that we talk about getting old fuck you fuck you this this is what you know we're talking about and it's important and it's important that you go over to her blog and read timegoesby.net because uh, she really really is following it and get, and tells you a lot about what it's like and other people do too on that site as well so it's good it's a, a wonderful wonderful group of commenters ladies and gentlemen she's a former wife but uh, she's now a present uh, regular two every two week uh, feature on this program is Ronnie Bennett. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Thank you, Alex. Years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, that's Ronnie Bennett. Okay, all right. Now listen, I gotta say something. Something's really pissing me off. Okay, and it, you know who it is? It's you, SG, you fucking motherfucking cocksucker. Do not call this program. Okay, I I open up. I have my Skype open up. Now the trouble with the, with Skype these days, with the new Skype, is that if you've got um, if you've got Skype uh, just even open. You know, and you got it on like uh, invisible or do not disturb, people can still call you. And that makes no sense to me whatsoever. So, uh, but he, anyway, SG kept calling, trying to call the program. SG, don't you listen to this program before you call it? Don't you realize that we are currently not taking calls? Pay attention, quit being so self absorbed. Anyway, so I don't want to talk to him if he calls, okay? All right. Let me see here. Let me, let me open up Skype here. Now, see, i got to open up Skype. By the way, I find that I'm a little bit off kilter here a little bit, a little out of sync. But uh, I don't understand why, but, you know, what the hell. Anyway, the lines are now open, and you can call the, uh, the program, and we can start taking calls from you. Uh, and it's GabNet Live if you're using Skype. Really, that's the thing you should use if you're not using Skype. Uh, it just makes it annoying because we don't get your picture, and you're not going to have the same amount of fun. So if you don't know how to use Skype, go check it out. Figure out how to use it and call us using Skype. If you don't want to use Skype, you can call us. There is a phone number over at GabNet.net uh, GabNet that you can call uh, that uh, doesn't require you to have Skype. But nevertheless, uh, I'm hoping that you will um, uh, uh, just, uh, you know, call me. Anyway, uh, 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 it's GabNet Live is the Skype uh, number on it. So uh, I don't know if I'm out of sync or not. I have no idea. I, I, I don't, uh, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay? All right. So for the most part, I think I'm okay. 
Uh, and I'm not going to adjust it here or anything like that. I think it's working just fine. Uh, so uh, we're waiting for people to call. That's what we do here, and the line is open now. And here comes Charlie Wallace. He's the first one, and I don't even know if I'm going to even have to have to do anything about uh, turn your camera on there, Charlie. Uh, but he's already got a spot here, as you can see, where that Skype thing is. Are you there, Charlie? Are you there? I'm trying. Okay. All right. I don't know what, what what's going on here. Anyway, here comes uh, here comes uh, here comes Phil Meyer. Uh, hey. Yeah. Yep. There's Phil. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go to the three panel. Okay. Here we go. There we go. All right. There. That's better. That's better. Okay. Anyway, I seem to be a little out of sync, but I don't understand why. Uh, let's see here. Wait a minute. Uh, you're not standing uh, I, in the shower. You know what the problem is? I got to take you, Phil, and put you in the number one spot here because you're not. Uh, you're in another spot, and uh, that's not. You're in the fourth spot, which is not in this. Uh, uh, okay, there we go. Number one, number one. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm a little out of sync, I think, but I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I yeah, can't tell. I, I don't know how it goes you. out, but somehow, um, I, and I can do something about it actually. Uh, okay. If I well, you're not it, out of sync on Skype, and for me to look at the YouTube. Yeah. It's 30 seconds yeah. later. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so anyways, you're definitely uh, out of sync on my you, YouTube. You know, I could <laughs> I could change the sync on this, but it would be so minor that it wouldn't really matter. So, yeah. uh, you know, what the hell? I'm getting so tired of the technology, I just want to puke. Uh, yeah. There's a show called uh, What We Do in the Shadows, which I think I talked about, which I said mm -hmm. is one of the funniest shows on the air about vampires. And there's this uh, recent episode where they're on trial for killing another vampire who they, they killed, they didn't kill, but it was an accident. And uh, it's very funny, but what happens is one of the vampires is played by Wesley Snipes who, who calls in by Skype, and it's constantly <laughs> glitching. <laughs> and he's not hearing what people are saying right. And he's out of sync. And uh, one of them says... Uh, uh, put, uh, Wesley, uh, put your put your Skype closer to your router, <laughs> and it's like a whole joke against Skype, which I, I kind of like. Yeah. So, you know. uh, let's see. I'm binging um, uh, a series called Longmire, and I've only I've gotten through two uh, seasons of six. Yeah. And uh, I thought that it's was a, a boring about show. About a sheriff. I know. I saw it. it. It's, it's not it's, boring, but I like those guys that have a lot of. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, cop stuff. Uh, well, it's it's not just cop stuff. It's, they live to a higher level. You know, they they do the right thing. Really? Kind of people. Oh, yeah, okay. I actually like those kind of. Oh, people. okay. Well, good for you. <laughs> you know, uh, I, uh, I I I just uh, uh, this show is very funny that I've been watching. So if you get a chance, watch it. It's it's silly. It's very uh, you very. You said silly. it was on FX. FX. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's called again? When, what We Do in the Shadows. Okay. Yeah. Because they're vampires. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not a real vampire fan. Well, this has, I'm not it, a I don't, fan. I don't give a shit if you don't care about vampires. This is not about... This is, it's a comedy show. Okay? Uh -huh. It's a comedy. But it's a comedy about vampires. And it makes fun of the whole, you know... Genre? Genre. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, Barnabas Collins uh, from uh, Dark Shadows, the, the guy who actually played him, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know his real name, but he just died uh, about uh, two months ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I never uh, liked that, that was, show. I thought that show sucked. I used to come home from school. I think yeah, I was you, in sixth. Yeah, you would like it. You would like yeah, it. Yeah, I was in sixth or seventh grade, mm -hmm. and I'd sit there. My The TV was in my parents' bedroom. Yeah. Uh, and I would sit down on the floor between the bed and the TV, maybe three feet away, two feet away, mm -hmm. and eat Captain Crunch cereal and watch, <laughs> uh, and, and watch Dark Shadows. Uh, it, it was an addicting show to a sixth grader. To a sixth grader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, uh, so we're waiting that? for some other people to call. Somebody, somebody, somebody tried to call me earlier, but anyway. Uh, uh, you said SG. Oh, fuck him. him. Fuck him! You know he doesn't. He doesn't listen to the show. He just calls. He's he, you know 
He's so obsessed with well, himself. Well, think about this. You don't open up the Skype line usually until it's well, ready. But to it be wasn't open. open. It was well, on do not, not his... it was on do not disturb. Well, okay, what does that so seem guess... to what does that seem to say to you? Now the uh, trouble with Skype is call. that the Skype, even if I, I have uh, Do Not Disturb on and somebody decides to call it because he's not even paying attention to his Skype to see if I'm online or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, 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 and, and fuck him. I don't need, I don't need that, that kind of uh, participation that doesn't give a shit what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, and yeah. then, so the ringing sound of the Skype went on mm -hmm. while during Ronnie's interview. All because oh, I, you can I, hear that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we heard it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I it always to happens on. The, the it, it always happens on the first call. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I don't turn it off because I'd like to see when the first call comes in. But I mean, yeah. Jesus, you know, pay attention, listen. Uh, have you checked out to see what's happening right now? Yeah. You know, and if you're not, don't just call blindly. Well, I went and made my tea when you started complaining about the WPLJ thing. I, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you heard that last night. Okay. So. Well, I don't I call. I said it, it was time for tea. What'd you say? I said, I don't call until I see the green light on Skype. That's when you open the line. That's correct. That's correct. Here comes Charlene yeah. Martinez. Let's see if she automatically gets added anyway. Uh, yes, she does. She does. Yeah, this thing is, uh, is working weird, but it's working. It, uh, uh, I always get, get a thing saying, you, you, yeah, it says uh, you missed the call, but there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just uh, put her in that. And, and you did miss the call. Uh, you had a big career in floor covering sales, and you, and you didn't take up on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, now, now I'm in sync. Now that there are other people. Before, remember uh, when there were the more people that happened, yeah. I went out of sync. Right. Now the, the more opposite. people there are, I go into sync. So I'm not going to offset my audio for my video because as the show goes on, I start getting more and more in sync. So, yeah. All right. I give up. Oh, anyway. Alex? Yes, uh, Charlene? I can't, um, you know, guarantee how I'm going to be here because I have a massive sinus infection. I'm on an antibiotic. <laughs> well, then, then, you sound horrible. then you should be getting better, actually. Yeah, I know. I took uh, two of them, you know. I'm getting excited. Oh, is this the first night of the Zithromax? Oh, it's, uh, oh, I forget which one it is. Not Zithromax, Zithromax, you take two, and then you take one. Oh, no, he gave me all those Z-Packs. Yeah, oh, those are great. Oh, yeah, those are awesome. So I'm excited uh -huh. that, you know, this guy gave me something, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I made like I didn't want it. And then he gave it to me, you know. <laughs> I don't open up my Skype all the way on my screen because I don't need to, okay? Mm -hmm. But do you guys get people in, in, uh, in uh, landscape mode? Because yeah. I, I'm getting you in landscape mode on my Skype, but the other two people are square. Well, uh, we're not hip. But uh, uh, you know, I see you all in landscape. I do too, yeah. Yeah. So if you open up your uh, monitor, that it may be restricting the size of what you see. Uh, that uh, could be. That could yeah. be. But just like on a phone, you know. You yeah, as I, as I open it up, people are wider. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I've been wide for a while. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm wide, too. Anyway, he asked me if I lost any weight today. <laughs> anybody see this? Anybody watch this thing last night that they did, where they did all? Oh, the, all the family. Yeah, I thought it was terrible. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see it. I, I after my credit cards got lost before the trip. Yeah. One of the ones that I didn't uh, call to renew was CBS On Demand. Uh, well, this was a, this was Hulu. ABC. It was ABC? Yeah. Yeah, but all in the family then. Why do I oh, then I would have had to have to Hulu, CBS I guess. When it was on. You would have had to have Hulu. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, or watch ABC, you know. Back in the old uh, days, I don't know if CBS I get ABC. That had it, yeah, mm -hmm. but um, I, I watched uh, a bit of it, and I got bored with it because, really, I mean, I expected that if Woody Harrelson was doing it and so on and Jamie Foxx, that they were going to bring their own spin to the characters, and they oh. didn't. They were just doing their impressions of the people who played the characters, and that was off-putting. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know. It just t turned me off completely. 
I don't want to see somebody uh, play uh, what's his name, you know, uh, Archie Bunker as what's his name played it. I want him yeah. to see him see. I wanted to see him take Archie Bunker and put his own spin on it. Yeah, and Jamie Foxx did like this horrible impression. He of did George a horrible Jefferson, impression of yeah. George Jefferson. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I thought it was terrible. I just thought it was well, horrible. Just like and then the WPLJ. You can never go back. What What'd you say? I said, just like at WPLJ, you can never go back. Yeah, well, yeah. apparently they were trying to last night, and, you know, and everybody yeah. was going, oh, this is, uh, I was listening today, people were going, oh, this is so wonderful, this was terrific. No, it wasn't, you know. Yeah, they, just because they said the N-word. I, I expected them to bring something new. Yeah, they bleeped it. They didn't let it go through. You know? Oh, they bleeped it? Yeah, they can't they let say it go the through. N-word anymore. No? And then they had a big discussion, you know, about how they can't say the N-word anymore. Times have changed, and, you know. Afterwards, they had a big oh. thing about, you know. Oh, well, because then, I, I listened to Jack's show, and he was talking to somebody, and they said that they sent it, and they didn't bleep it. Uh, so maybe I misunderstood. I yeah, think you did, because well, I heard Jack's show, and they didn't say that. Yeah, oh. anyway, it was, I, thought it was, I thought it was just, you know, it was, I had to turn it off. I got tired of it. I was bored to begin with. And, you know, it was weird, Alex. It was like an old show. like you know. Well, the, old, that, that was fine. That was okay. If they wanted to use an old script, that's fine. But the fact was, for instance, that Woody Harrelson didn't have the comedy timing uh, of what's his name who played Archie Bunker. Did not he have was the doing that Carol. Uh, uh, Carol. Yeah, it's more like he was, like more, like it was more. It was more into like doing the yeah. impression of Archie Bunker than mm. to do the comedy timing that was needed to make it funny. Mm. You know. I thought though, uh, Marissa Tomei. Yeah. She was pretty good as Edith. I liked her. I thought she was fine, but again, you know, she's doing Edith voice. You know, and mm. I I, uh, I would have liked to have seen her put her own spin on it. She's a very talented woman, and I think she could have done that. Uh, I thought Jamie Foxx was horrid as yeah. George Jefferson. I thought, it, uh, uh, did you see it, uh, Charlie? No, I didn't. Oh, okay, so. So people here are discussing it with me, and they didn't see it, so I don't know why I'm talking well, about it. Well, I only it. know from what I heard in Jack's show. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm not so sure I heard it straight. Yeah. Did Jack like it? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Really? Uh, who, somebody liked it. Somebody else didn't like it. You know, I, it's, I don't think everybody saw it on his show either. Yeah. Uh, Patrick was talking about it. I don't think he saw it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, who knows? Anyway. But it was strange. They didn't do the whole show. They, like, cut it, and then they started doing the Jeffersons. You know? No, they did the whole show. They did? They, they did? It, oh, oh, yeah, they did. Well, that, that whole show was an hour and a half. They actually probably had to stretch it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, either that or they just put in more commercials than they did in the old days. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, my mother kept he, complaining. He, each Mary doesn't have blonde hair. Yeah. I said, Ma, the hair isn't the point, you know? <laughs> yeah, the, the hair isn't the point. And, and if anything, Ellie Kemper brought her own version of that mm -hmm. character to the show, and that's exactly what they should have done. So did, what's what's his name? I don't, can't remember his name who played the... Uh, yeah, the guy with the mustache. Who played the played Rob him. Reiner character. Uh, mm -hmm. He was kind of doing his own thing. I don't think he has a mustache, though, but they felt compelled to give him one because... Rob Reiner had a mustache. You know, I just would have liked to have seen them uh, trying to put a different spin on the whole thing. You know, and they, they didn't. And, Did uh, Norman Lear have anything to do with the production of oh, this? Oh, he was in it. He was on I know, it. Uh, yeah, I heard that. But did he uh, as a cameo or just... No, he was one of the hosts of the show with Jimmy Kimmel. Okay. You know. And, and uh, uh, but he didn't... Uh, produce it or do anything uh, oh uh, i'm yeah. sure he had was he 96 some, he's 98 i think wow. i he, but he, i oh no i'm sure he had something to do with it because he still owns those properties yeah you know so um i'm sure he had something to do with it and uh, he was saying oh they were just terrific i that was so wonderful of course you want it to be because this is your you're making money tonight pal yeah you know but i i just felt it was it was mediocre at best. Um, and if I were to have done something like that, I would have said, I want you guys to bring your own character into this. 
You know? Or just bring the bring the shows into this century. Well, no, you know? they, I, they were talking about Nixon being president and things like that. So it was yeah. a a space cap, a time capsule. Okay. Okay. All right. So they 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 kept it in its time frame, and that's fine. But I just would have liked to have seen these actors bring their own spin on the characters rather than simply try to do a retread of the ones that, you know, already existed. Yeah, not a where are they now. Exactly, exactly. So uh, that was that. Um, Let me see here. Was there, oh, oh, you know uh, what? Uh, Mario Batali. Oh, yeah. You get ravioli and 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 a scooch. Yeah, yeah, no, he, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name, uh, um, Batali. He lost his, he lost his Crocs, sir. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, they, he, uh, yeah, you want to say it, Alex? Well, uh, he, he's been charged in, uh, Boston, is it? Not Boston, where is it? Uh. Yeah, Boston. Uh, yeah. Another another one. Uh, yeah, Boston. Uh, Boston for, yeah, some, for, for some gal for uh, wanted to sell, uh, they, He offered a selfie with her, and he um, uh, reached around and uh, you know grabbed her chest and uh, mammary gland, and then uh, also uh, she's saying that uh, he uh, fondled her uh, private parts. Okay, uh, let me ask you a question. Okay. And then, and then wanted him wanted her to go back to his room and. I got a uh, couple of questions here. Okay, yeah. and, and folks, don't take this as a sign that I, I believe in this kind of behavior. I absolutely find it disgusting. But uh, let's change the person that did this. Suppose this. Uh, I, I think if, if he did what she said he did, yeah. regardless of the person, she didn't know him, it, it was a little too forward. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you're using the term a little too forward, though. You're not saying this is. Out now, uh, molestation. It, it, you know. It, yeah, it was. It was not. Uh, it was definitely an invasion of her personal space. It, 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 what he did was that if if what they claim he did, he did. Right. It was an absolute uh, terrible thing, and uh, he's a horrible human being. However, mm-hmm. however, what harm was done to this woman? It, it, you know, uh, she wasn't raped. You know. There wasn't, you know what I'm saying? In other words, wow. yes, I mean, maybe he should get a fine or maybe he should get a slap on the wrist or maybe he should be outed in the Me Too movement. But really, but they, They're going you know, after criminal charges. Is she suing him uh, civilly? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. So, uh, now... Uh, I mean, all, the, I'm, all I'm saying is, are, how, I, all, well, let me go back to my original question. Okay. But Mario Batali is one of the most disgusting human beings I've ever seen. The only one who's more disgusting is Harvey Weinstein. Okay? They look alike. <laughs> they look alike. They have that same disgusting thing. Rotund. Uh, <laughs> Going for rotund, unshaven. Yeah. Uh, 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 they probably smell bad. I mean, I have no idea what else is going on. So every there. time you get ravioli down at the Italy, you're you're supporting. No, he's uh, not his, part of Italy anymore. I, I know he, he invested had to, himself, he had to but give he still owns, doesn't he? No, no. He's been deported from Italy. He no, he was uh, <laughs> he he was either bought out or he was thrown out of huh. Italy and all his restaurants, which he owned huh. also with the Bastianiches. Who he owned Bapo, where I like to go have dinner. Uh, he owned a couple other restaurants, and the Bastianiches were in on those restaurants with him, and in on him with Italy. Mm-hmm. And uh, Italy, Italy does. I heard somewhere where I hear something like two hundred million dollars business a year out of that one location. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, amazing. It's a lot of ravioli. Uh, let me see here. Jeff Stein is calling. Let me get Jeff in here. Oh, there's right. Jeff. Okay, hold on a second. Let hey, me yes. uh, let me add Jeff to the. Um, well, here. I have to get out of here and then go back. In here. Somebody's got their audio on. Because I heard yeah, somebody's got their audio on. Do they? Okay, let me see here. Jeff Steinzeller. There we go. Okay, and uh, 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 Jeff Stein is he there? Yep. Okay, yep. so I'll make the transition. So we now have the. Uh, other one here. Okay, so there we go. Uh, no, but here's what I'm saying. 
Uh, he's a dis they're both disgusting human beings. What if, what if this were George, uh, George Clooney? <laughs> okay. I don't think they'd complain. <laughs> you know, you know what they'd say? Guess what George Clooney just did to me? You know, I mean, that's the yeah. that's the point I'm making. If you, if you look at it, the people who are being accused of this and charged with these crimes are all disgusting, vile-looking human beings. Maybe the they're guilty of, among other things, being disgusting, vile-looking human beings. But they're powerful, and they try to use their power and position yeah. to uh, take advantage. Him, well, I, I mean... Yeah, I think uh, some employees uh, uh, in some of the restaurants... You don't think your hero, well, Donald like Trump, did that something. in his time? No, he just talked about how it was easy to oh, do. No, oh, no, 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 no. You, you I, did, I wasn't the question. TV. That wasn't the question I was asking, Phil. That's what he said. No, the question I was asking was, do you think he never could have been accused of something like that? No, he paid for his. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, hey, anybody that pays 130 a pop, I'd sleep with him for that. <laughs> no, he paid no, he paid $130,000 to hush it up. But of course, yeah, this is the man who we, who told us yesterday, after. this is the man who yesterday told us he doesn't cover up anything ever. Yeah. He didn't. He had his pants off. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're making a joke about it, Phil, yeah. but he said he didn't he never covered I don't cover things up. Really? What was that hundred thirty thousand dollars? Because you see, the thing was, he it was consensual, and so what was he covering up? It's just that he was being blackmailed. Now, blackmail yeah, he wasn't was being he wasn't being he up. wasn't being blackmailed. He made a deal. They made a deal for her not to talk if they paid her one hundred thirty thousand dollars. She she didn't need to make the deal, and neither did he. If she didn't approach uh, and him she, and say, Okay, but she I'm made the deal. Him. But nevertheless, that's covering it up. No, and the reason uh, he covered it up was because he didn't want it to come out during the election. Well, thank God he could uh, afford well, it. Well, no, no, no. If, Phil, he, it's a cover-up, what he said he doesn't do. Uh, yeah, what do you mean? There's no way of out of this, Phil. Don't <laughs> try and get out of this. Yeah, no. Uh I'm just uh, I'm just worried that um, what's her name? Uh, who did he cover it up with? With the, uh, the porno star? What's her name? Stormy. 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 Daniels. Stormy's going to get screwed out of some of her uh, uh, book deal uh, money uh, by Avenatti. You know, that's no. That's that, he, he is accused. He is accused of doing that. But we have to say accused at this point. He has not oh, been not, not like uh, not like Trump, who you know, even if he's accused, he's guilty. Because where there's smoke, there's no, fire. No, I have. What have I said that he's guilty of? Uh, covering up. No, uh, I. He, we do know he covered up. He, My, Michael Cohn he said that he had he, he paid one hundred thirty thousand dollars on behalf of Donald Trump to tell her not to tell her story. Well, that's fair enough. I mean. Uh, a lot of people have done things like that. Oh, uh, I see. I see. Because everybody else has done it. It's okay for a no, guy who he's got a for a guy who is a president of the United States. This is not just reputation. anybody. This he's the president of. Repeat after me. He's the president of the United States. Oh, I am really glad that you finally acknowledged that. Uh, you know, it's 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 about time that you've accepted him as the president of mm -hmm. the United States. Do you think he's acting presidential? No, but he's uh, oh. doing what he <laughs> promised he was going to do, which was upset the apple cart, clean the swamp. You, you already have the swamp creatures like Schumer and Pelosi uh, going uh, crazy, calling him crazy because because he is crazy. Uh, well, no, they're they're. Here little, we go again. Let's not get into this. Let's, let's not get into this. You're just going to keep making excuses for bad behavior, and I don't know how you can do that. But you're what you're helping to ruin America, okay? Uh, yeah. Well, I. What I about guess, what about the charge today? Did you hear? Did you hear about uh, Mayor Pete mm -hmm. today? Yes. Uh, yeah. Is that when he retorted against uh, retorted? Trump? Retorted? Well, yeah. He he yeah he. Um, he made a statement uh, uh, about Trump and his bone spurs. Is that the one? You're what about? he said was that basically Donald Trump was a draft dodger. 
Yeah. Okay. And that he invented a, fa a, a false medical problem in order to get himself out of the military. And someone else probably had to go in his place and put their life in jeopardy or maybe even lose their life. So, so how do you feel about that, Phil? Okay, Mayor Pete is a, uh, a war veteran, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. two, twi two tours Twice. in Afghanistan. But he was a reserve. No. That yes, he, he was a reserve. And, and as far as I know, you say reserves aren't real. No, I, didn't, I never said that. Wait a minute. When, that. When, when did he I, says it about me. I, I never said that. You were never in the reserve. I was a policeman. No, you were a policeman. We're talking about a different thing there, Phil. <laughs> nah, hey, reserve is a reserve. The, no, no, the, uh, the military reserve is not the same I thing. I played the guitar also. <laughs> and what was that? What was Mayor, Mayor Pete, guys? Was he in the reserve or was he in, yeah, in, he in the, the uh, uh, Navy Reserve? reserve. He, served two tours. he was in the Navy Reserve. <clears throat> Navy Reserve? Navy Reserve. And he served in Afghanistan? Yeah, because they sent ships over there. All that up. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, he made the statement today that, you know, well, what happened was he was talking about how he, you know, got out of his military service with this phony ch thing of bone spurs. And uh, the guy who was interviewing him from, I think, the Washington Post, maybe, or the New York Times, uh, asked him, he said, would you say that he was a draft dodger? And he said, I guess I'd have to. It sounds like draft dodging to me. In those years, that was the Vietnam War years. And I know that you you went. Uh, uh, you, you were in very early on, almost uh, before anything really happened. And, uh, you know, I didn't support the Vietnam War at that time. Uh, I was, you know, uh, uh, 18 years old uh, during the last draft. And uh, I didn't want to go to Vietnam. I, I didn't believe that it was a just just and uh, a justified war and um, you know I, I was similar to a lot of the youth at that time why is Trump any different you know uh, my mother wanted to send me to Canada I'll tell you, I, what, I I'll tell you why go. I'll tell you why Trump is different because Trump was drafted and he got out of it you weren't drafted you were simply part of that that lottery I, and your number did right. not come up in time oh it came up yeah i was number 64 yeah but my birthday was the week of the last lottery and that one didn't count and that's why i like yeah Nixon. okay but but <laughs> le you legitimately did not go okay that's correct and right. and i have always said to people that i was against that war and anybody who didn't want to go there, I would, uh, I would do everything I could do to defend and to support if they, for instance, refused the draft uh, and put themselves on the line as a result of that. I didn't particularly, I wasn't particularly fond of people who ran like, off the, uh, let, me fin boxer, you, let, let me finish, let me finish. Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Uh, I, on the other hand, I'm, I was very much against um, uh, people who went to Canada. Because I felt what they were doing was shirking their their ability to clog up the system and to fight it here at home. They simply ran away and and uh, uh, got themselves out of the line of fire, so to speak. So I always defended the people who refused to go. I always felt they were brave, and I felt that. Uh, well, I, what, it, what's the difference? Uh, how you get out of it if you? Didn't believe in because it. And, no, no, and you no, had no, no. Because one way, money. no, no. One, when if you refuse to go, you put yourself up for possibility of imprisonment, of uh, jail time, and so on. But what you're doing also in the process, if there are enough of you, is clogging up the system. All right. Whereas if you're getting out because you got a bone spur, you're just a fucking coward. Okay, you're not willing to stand up against the war, but you're not willing to be part of it either. Alex, he couldn't stand up. He had a bone spur on his yeah, foot. Yeah, right, right. When's the last time that bone spur bothered him? Well, he's got special shoes now. He can yeah, he can't remember what foot he had on. Yeah, he couldn't remember what <laughs> foot it was on. Uh, hey, I, I'm only 64, and I can't remember what foot I've got on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I think uh, when I heard Mayor Pete say that today, I said, he's my guy, you know? I mean, really. I mean, this guy, I think, 
can go up against Trump and, and take <clears throat> no prisoners, basically. Well, you, you know, know? Uh, when he feels attacked, he seems to have a, a, an ability to attack back. No. But so does Biden. You know, he's, uh, very, he's very thin-skinned. And, and, uh, Trump uh, or Biden? I, Trump. And I just don't think we want that in a president. That's not, it's not. You know, I, I was talking to Ray the other night, and, and we were talking about that maybe, you know, we were talking about bullies. And, uh, and you know, I said, well, maybe Trump. By the way, is there anybody else who wants to join this well, conversation? Yeah. Please, you know, and, give us a and call. And Trump was bullied, and now he's a bully, except he's a bully with billions, whether you believe well, them Well, or not. Wait, wait until we see the tax returns. Yeah. <laughs> well, the tax return is going to tell you how much he made that year. It's not going to tell you what his net worth is. It's going to tell us a lot. It's going to tell us a lot. It's going to tell us how much he didn't make and how, how, much, he was in, how much he got from other people. Well, you know, <clears throat> there are companies that do millions and millions or billions of dollars, and the CEO takes a salary because you don't need yeah, to Yeah, but, but we're, it's, I believe that not only are Donald Trump's uh, 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 tax returns involved here, but also those of the Trump Corporation. That, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I, two, two judges, I guess, have said that he's going to have to show them. And, uh, and I guess he's going to continue to appeal. I don't think we're ever going to see them. Well, doesn't that make yeah. you suspicious? I don't care. What do you mean you don't care? I don't care how much he has in the bank. I don't care how much he made. I only care what he's doing and that he's fulfilling the promises that he made uh, when I voted for him. What, to ruin the country? Well, you think it's ruining the country. I think it's uh, preserving capitalism and, mm. and fighting socialism and, and, and the evil that socialism is. He promised socialism to have the that. back of the, of the little guy. He promised to have the back of the people. He was uh, going to be the politician that was going okay. to do things for the people. I, I know there's a couple of guys here that aren't working. But you know what? There's a lot of people that are because unemployment is low. There are more people off food stamps. You shouldn't have to condemn people to be on food stamps. You give people food stamps because they need it. But if they don't need it because they're working, they're off of food stamps. It, it makes them... Uh, uh, you know, well, somebody fulfilled. somebody said today, and I, I agree with them, that um, we have to, uh, the, Dem the Democrats have to have a candidate who cares about the people that take a shower when they come home from work and not before they go to work. Uh, uh, well, you, so what you see, you know, I, I, I don't think it matters. You I know, think it uh, matters that hardworking people have to know that this guy is not in their corner. Well, he's been more in their corner eliminating in what, in what, a regulation. What, no, no, eliminating regulation is being in the corner of the businesses that benefit from it, Phil. Yeah, the small businesses. No. What, has your business been, uh, been uh, affected by his? In a positive way. No, in what way? Come on, quick. Uh, uh, there's, I, I've uh, got uh, a 30% uh, uh, increase. What? Uh, a 30% increase in sales. Uh, my taxes yeah, but are is, that, is that because of Donald Trump? Yeah. No, really? You know, as, uh, it's, you know, it's because of the housing market. Or is it coincidental? And, and like or is it coincidental? No, as the economy rises, so does uh, so do the businesses around it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is this because of Trump, or is this because it was happening anyway? No, I suffered <clears throat> through eight years of Obama. Well, I, mean, I got to tell you, you a, didn't suffer towards the end of Obama, because Obama's... Uh, uh, the, this rise, this uh, better the New York economy, Times. this better economy started under under Obama. I have started, but the New York Times. Well, if he hadn't uh, started it, piece. it would have been in the ditch by the time Trump got it. The New York Times just recently said that this is uh, th this increase in business, this this good economy is Trump. Uh, and uh, you know, it was it was a, 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 this week's uh, could be because uh, businesses a, feel they can get away with more under Trump. What do you think, no, Charlie? No, Charlie's been quiet. Shut, shut up, Phil. Uh, Charlie should say something. Oh, you're so, just a pleasant guy. <laughs> shut up, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the only way to shut you up. And also, would more people call so that he doesn't have it all to himself? Well, first of all, Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Thank you. I was going to just say that when I had my business mm -hmm. um, with, during o Obama, mm -hmm. we did very well with him. It was um, great. That's because it's you. You're, you know, you were a good businessman, 
And you know, but there were a lot of people that weren't doing oh, well. Sometimes we didn't I recover from the. We didn't recover from the. Well, I, I, I'm sure that uh, Trump. Is, I'm sure. I'm sure Trump is good for the bad <clears throat> businessman because he's a bad one himself. No, it. it, it you know, under Obama, we were looking at one percent uh, uh, GDP mm-hmm. growth, mm-hmm. Uh, under, and 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 we had much higher unemployment. Mm-hmm. Under under uh, Trump, uh, we're looking at three percent and and above GDP growth. And Obama that, is bad for routes and Trump. The only people that. that made had better growth, I think, was was Clinton, because under the Clinton years, uh, business was fabulous and it was growing at leaps and bounds every year. Mm-hmm. But we also had the advent of the home computer, um, no, cell phones. You also, you also, towards the end of the uh, Clinton era, you had the falling out of, of Silicon Valley. You had that complete collapse. Yeah, that, that's, that's a bubble. They, and they allowed that bubble to happen, just like with the housing bubble. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. And there are bubbles. I mean, there are always bubbles. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we've been joined by Kevin. Let me get him on the uh, in the group here. <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, Let's see, it's Hog Rider. There he is. Okay. See, I'm getting to know you by your names now, uh, by your uh, nicknames, as it were. Okay. There's uh, there's uh, there's Kevin. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Jeff. How's your computer doing today? It's doing fine. The only thing is, that when I first start out, I'm a little out of sync, which I don't get. That part I don't get. But now I'm completely in sync. So I, yeah. you know, I I I don't know. I I don't. I give up. You know. I could probably do a little adjustment, put myself a little more in sync, but I, I really don't want to go through that mess. I'll just do this show and hope everybody enjoys it, you know? Hello, uh, Kevin. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Yeah. You look great in sync. Do I look great in sync? <laughs> Were you watching it online? Yeah, just yeah. a little bit before, and, yeah. And was I in sync? You were in sync, oh, just okay. like a little boy group. All right, all right. <laughs> At least he was, he was in a little shower. Dance. Little boy group, little boy group. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, what do you think? Do you think um, you think Donald Trump was a uh, draft dodger? As Pete. Oh yeah. Pete, uh, uh, Mayor Pete calls him. Yeah, even even oh. I would. Shit. T- turn your mic up At a little. At least I would have moved to Canada or something. Yeah, turn your mic up just a little bit. You need a little more volume. Yeah, maybe it's turned the wrong way. Is that better? There, yeah, that's much better. Much better. Yeah. So. Yeah, it gets turned the wrong way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he was he was funny talking about how he's been the most transparent president ever. He has. Yeah. He. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, the best one today was though. Uh, he is a stable genius. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. Stable genius. You know, a genius the... is not something you call yourself. That's something that someone <laughs> calls you. Okay. And stable. <laughs> stable. That's something a psychiatrist determines. You know. Well, your your mother might say it about you. And transparent when you won't turn over your taxes. <laughs> you won't yeah. turn over your grade. Yeah, I'm the most transparent president people. ever. He's always the most something ever. The most transparent ever. People testify in front of Congress. No, that's, that's uh, he, so he let him testify in front of Mueller. <clears throat> and, yeah, and, but that and, won't and let us see you what, didn't get what you want. You want to do over. Well, hey, don't, hey, don't shout he over Charlie. Testify. No, he answered questions on paper. He didn't testify. He didn't have to testify in person, but all his uh, his staff testified. Uh, his um, McGann, uh, yeah, thirty hours. As of today, his eight son of them are going to jail. He's the exact opposite of uh, th- those were all pre. Uh, pre-election stuff. Oh boy, here you you rewrite history, Phil. <laughs> I rewrite history. Mm-hmm. He's suing people so they can't release his grades. How was that transparent? Are they, so he can't release his grades? Hey, it was so all my grades. I'd sue to not have them released either. Then you're not being transparent. Don't claim don't, to be transparent if you're doing that. Yeah, well, and and please don't call yourself a, a stable genius when you're not a you, you know you, don't call yourself a genius. Hey, I'm a genius. What do you yeah. do? You work at Apple? Hey, listen, I got to tell you. Even yeah, Einstein didn't I'll t- call uh, Listen, the guys at the geniuses at the Apple store are more geniuses than he is. Okay? <laughs> you know. I mean, when you call yourself a genius, and I, I was going to say, uh, uh, when you call yourself a genius, as he called himself, that really is going to be a big blow to Einstein. You know? 
I mean, let's reserve genius for those people who really are geniuses and never refer to yourself as a genius. I was saying to somebody the other day when they were talking about somebody being a genius, I said, you know, I don't think anybody ever called me a genius. And, and rightfully so. And rightfully so. And if they had asked, said I was a genius, I'd tell them, hey, that's going to be a lot. That's going to be big news to Einstein. You Actually, know. you're a pretty smart guy. How about Da Vinci? He did well, no, no, but, but being a genius is a different quality. And, uh, you know, he, did you ever he, take he wasn't test? even a business genius for crying let, out let, loud. Let me ask you this, Alex. Did you, did you ever take the, the, uh, the what, what do they call that test that they give you for Mensa? Uh, the no. Uh, yeah. Aptitude? No. 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 I always considered yeah. that kind of. Uh, I don't know. I, I just uh, it, it, let's say I was a genius. Let's say I could pass yeah. the Mensa test. I still wouldn't do it because, quite frankly, I'm not going like, look how smart I am. Well, yeah, you, you know, know. I, I had somebody that wanted me to do it when I was much younger, and maybe when I was younger, I had more, you know, I, I, you know, cognitive ability than than I do now. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I, I didn't do it either. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I thought it was a waste. But I wanted to ask Charlie. Charlie, you got some things you want yeah. to say here? Well, I, I, I sort of said him. I mean, he's not hes not transparent. He's the opposite of transparent. Anything they've ever asked him for, he's fought tooth and nail not to get it, re, not to have to give it. He let every single person that Mueller wanted to interview in, be interviewed. He provided yeah, he, millions of documents. And he, then he, 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 he retracted their statements in the Mueller report, so we can't see what they told. So that's not no, those redacted statements don't have to do with Trump. They have to do with uh, uh, no. They, they have to do with uh, people that testify. How do you know that, Phil? Because can you read? Can you read? Uh, can you read under what was blacked out? That's what Mueller said. Mueller said that no, he didn't was, talk uh, about the redaction. In fact, he was very unhappy with the way in which uh, uh, this. No, he was uh, unhappy. With the way the media was portraying, no, he no, you got it all wrong, Phil. You're reading the wrong papers. He was upset by the fact that what's his name, uh, the Attorney Barr. General Barr, interpreted what was in his yeah. report and interpreted it all wrong. That's what uh, he was upset about. You know, uh, the other night you, you know said, him to answer that, Phil. That's what he was upset about. Am no, I, I don't am, agree with. Am him. I wrong, everybody? Am I misstating of it? He is. No, you're not wrong. You are absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, sycophant. You were, you said it last night, and yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, and you were correct. That's all. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I don't see it from the same angle. Well, you know, you know. No yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's so transparent. He's telling people that don't even work for him anymore that they can't go in front of Congress. Yeah, because he has something called executive privilege in these conversations. And, and also... Well, there's a question know, what, as to what, what executive privilege is. There's a question they're, as to what... Try, what they're trying to create a perjury trap. They they don't care about the facts. The uh, the, 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 the Congress if you doesn't, don't doesn't lie, care. you can't commit perjury. No, because if you say, oh, I, I had four tamales and you really had three tamales, you're going to jail. You know? Uh, that it, it, It's... it's um, they use these. It's a trap for a reason. They call well, it. What you a mean, trap. like what they did to Clinton? Yeah, probably. He asked them what what is sex and what what they, they defined sex as did not include blowjobs. So he did not lie to Congress when he said he didn't have sex with her. Because he lied. Well, that here, 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 here's 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 what I've heard. Now let me bring Charlene into this. Charlene, yes. uh, uh, is a blowjob sex? Mm, yes. Okay, yes. so mm-hmm. when somebody says, how many times have you had sex, do you include the blowjobs? Yes. Uh, really, you do? Because most women won't. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe Mo- the ones you date. Most, no, most <laughs> of the women I've talked to, I, I, you know, I, I've said, well, is, is a blowjob sex? And they go, no. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I, it's I nasty, they say. Well, I never considered it sex. I mean, if somebody said, did you have sex with that woman? I would go, no, I got a blowjob, but I didn't have sex with her. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. So, so th- does that mean that gay men don't have sex because it's not a vagina? No, they have thing? sex because they take it up the ass. Okay, so they're taking it in the mouth. What's the difference? No, I'm an saying, I'm say, I'm saying that, uh, no, uh, uh, well, since when, well, let me put it this way. 
an ass is very close to the vagina. Okay? You in fact, bend over the mouth in fact sometimes, the occasionally, I made that mistake. Okay? <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, I would like, you know, um, <laughs> you know, two more inches, Phil, and you would have been a butt fuck. Anyway... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's, it, you know, it, it, all I'm saying is, is that, uh, that, uh, uh, they wanted to get Clinton and they were as much like you're claiming they want to get Trump exactly. and, and they went after Clinton and, uh, they got him, you know, they got him and they got, put him in a perjury trap, you know? Exactly. So yeah. Trump is smart enough to know that that's what they're no, trying to do. He's smart enough so to, don't send these guys I, I think into, he's smart, you know, this. something, look, you're not going to tell me. That, oh, God, I'm not even going to ask you this because I know the answer I'm going to get, and it's stupid of me even to ask. It's like... Um, well, at least it's predictable. It's, what? I'm predictable. It's predictable? What's predictable? Yeah. Well, what, my what, answer. What your answer is going to be. Yeah. I mean, your an the, the, the question is, uh, uh, do you honestly believe he isn't trying to hide something? I don't know. But uh, doesn't that bother maybe. you? Wait a minute. Let me finish. Doesn't yeah. that bother you? No. Why? Because it's none of my business. It is. I don't give a shit. It is absolutely your business. Belichick. It's your business. It's Charlie's business. It's Kevin's if business. It's Charlene's Belichick. business. It's Jeff's business. It's my business because we are citizens of this country and he is the steward over this. And right. he is not treat, he's treating it like a... Uh, uh, a private ego trip rather than something no. where he's doing he, something for me. You, you said exactly what he is. He was the duly elected president of the United States. And <laughs> therefore, whether you like him there and sitting in that house or not, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And unless he gets voted out, he is the president. And if you're going to try to create uh, these uh, tactics to, uh, to stifle, was a duly to elected stifle what, right. uh, what the people that voted for him wanted, then uh, I think that that's obstruction. But By he's us? the president. He's not the king. Right. Well, Nobody like said he was. He is he's acting like the king. Well, you think he's acting like the king. He's just doing what he promised he's at, to No, do. he's not he's acting like the king. He's doing whatever the fuck he he's wants He's acting to. like a South American dictator. Yeah, and and, right. and and assuming well, he has the same food? and assuming he has the same rights and privileges. Yeah. So uh, is he starving the American people? Is he is he withholding uh, medicine? Not is yet. It, are Not people yet. Yeah, from actually, I'll tell you, he is. <clears throat> yes, he is, Phil. Yeah. Why? Because he wants to improve. No, the no, he doesn't want to improve Improved. anything. He's kicked twenty million people off of health care. No, he said that you don't have Wait a, a mandate. Hold on a second. Uh, Hold on a second, Phil. Shut up, Phil. I mean, what I'm trying to say to you is, and you, you won't find a better way to. Yeah, ask well, me to... I, you stop, don't you? Uh, well, no, I stop because I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Phil, happy Phil, with that. Oh, okay. Well, shut up anyway. Anyway, uh, <laughs> where, where, where were we? Um, uh, the you medical. know, uh, uh, this this man that you say is trying to help everybody yesterday walked out of a meeting where he didn't want to help anybody. Yes. Yeah. It, if, he, if, if he wanted to help everybody, he would have blown all that off and kept on going and done something. Well, that's your opinion. My no, opinion that's, that's is what he would have that, done. That's uh, not my opinion. It's not a good negotiating position. to. There was no negotiating going on here, Phil. No. What they were doing was so getting together and <laughs> figuring out a way that this country's infrastructure could be improved. It was not a matter that anybody was negotiating for anything. They they were, already, they, they and and the reason he got out of that, among other reasons, is he didn't have a clue on how to do it. Yep. Uh, it's his ego. No, it was it was more about money, and I think uh, no, it had nothing to do with money, Phil. There wasn't money. The Republicans. That was, the what Republicans they were going were to discuss was the infrastructure and and a lot of other situations in which you and and everybody on this panel, their lives would be improved by it. The conversation. The other day was supposed to be about how it was going to get paid. And the problem was, I believe that the Republican Senate uh, it would basically push back and said, we're not going to spend that money. And I think he just had to cut oh, it off. Oh, I see. And so therefore, it only it took him three minutes to get out of the room. Then they didn't sit there discussing how maybe they no, could work this he, out. He had his other issue with them 
which is no, when they beca- said no, that no, he because was, he had the uh, mic set up outside with the signs up already to give a speech that he was planning on giving. He knew exactly he how that meeting was going to turn. He has those on. signs and that information on every meeting that he goes into. Uh, he I've never seen him before. Today. Have you ever seen those signs before? Uh, he's been using. Have those you ever statistics. seen those signs before, Phil? Not those. No, okay, then th- those signs were made up the night before because they knew what was going to happen at that meeting, that he was going to be out of there in three minutes and then be giving a speech, and this, these signs were there, and the stuff was being passed out to the press. What about the lies that Pelosi Wait, and no, no, said? No, that no, forget, was, forget about the whatabouts right now. We're no, talking he, about he him. No, said that in the meeting he was banging on the desk. They made him out like a cruise trip. No, they didn't uh, say he. Did shoe. anybody hear him? Hear them say he was banging on his desk? No, I didn't. Yes, right. and, and no, and, no, and, no. and yelling that. at them. I didn't hear that at all. No, I heard was them did, saying you don't he said what he had noise. to say. They, they said he said what he had to say, and then he was out of there in three yeah. minutes. Right. He, they, they didn't talk about p- any pounding on a desk. That was another meeting they had a long time ago that you're uh, thinking uh, about, they Phil. Said, no, they didn't. They didn't, Phil. They just didn't. I listened to what they had to say. None of them said that. Yeah, I, I, well, I heard it. Well, they, well, I don't know where you heard it. I heard it from Pelosi. I didn't hear it from Pelosi. I listened to everything Pelosi had to say. No, I, you know, I hear it from Pelosi. I heard her. She said they were in there. He talked for three minutes and then he turned right. around and walked out. There was no talking about fist. Anybody hear that about a fist being uh, hit on? No. The, no. Uh, Now, he was in a meeting with the farmers today, and five of his people, uh, Kelly Conway, uh, uh, Mercedes Schlaff, uh, uh, his uh, spokeswoman, uh, uh, Sarah Sanders, uh, Sanders, uh, he had asked each one individually, did I do what Pelosi accused him of doing, which was, and they each and every one of them said, no, you were very respectful, you said your piece. What do you think they're going to say? Hey. Yeah. Uh, Sarah right. Sanders, to begin well, with, Sarah to begin Sanders with, they said, never said anything about him pounding his fist. I'm telling you that, Phil. I'm None of us heard it. Would, how come you're the only one here that heard it? You're, how come you're the only one here that heard it? Because I'm the one that 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 thinks uh, uh, outside. No, the no, box. no. This is not outside the box. He didn't. She didn't say that. I heard her say it. I heard her say. Well, it. then you're hearing well, things, Phil. Cool. Uh, delusional. You're delusional. Okay. You're delusional, which right. makes you a perfect fit as being a trumper. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you didn't hear us say it because you believe it to be true. Yeah. I don't. I, you know something. It's his personality. I. The only thing she yeah. said that I agreed with a hundred percent was, "I pray for Donald Trump and I pray for the United States of America." Yeah. And then today, I, oh, and today, today she she said it again. She says. I pray for a Donald Trump, and I pray that his family will do an intervention. Yeah, uh, you know, because if they she's care trying to about the United States nuts. of America. She's not you know, nuts. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let Charlene talk. She hasn't talked all night. Yes, Charlene. If we don't get him out in 2020, if we have him again, we're, we're, we're finished as a country. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. I mean, I believe it Definitely. myself. He's going to have us totally ruined. Another four years if we get. You mean there'll be no unemployment? Uh, oh, please, Phil. Unemployment will be the least of our worries. Yeah, it is the least of our worries. Uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, it, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, and there's yeah. a lot of people. Uh, Phil, that think I want to ask like you me. a question. Let me ask you a question. Sure. I want to see how well you know your your economics. Okay. Well, I'm yeah. Not in, uh, I'm he's imposing tariffs against China. Is that correct? Yes. What is a tariff and who pays it? It's a tax, and uh, the people that buy those products in this, in, 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 for instance, if the tariff is in the United States, the people in the United States who buy those products pay the tariff. That is correct. So, how is that benefiting us? Because you have a choice. Uh, because he's, been, he's either... been quoted as saying that the tariff is against the Chinese. Well, it is. Well, wait a minute. No, it's not because the Chinese are not paying a penny. It doesn't matter. What happens is the Chinese products don't get bought over the American so products. So you don't think there's you don't think there's a whole rest of the world to sell your stuff in? There's we buy a lot of their shit. 
matter of fact, we're buying a ha- five hundred billion dollars, a half a trillion dollars. By the a way, year I'm going to go buy. An, I, I need to go buy an air conditioner, and I'm probably going to have to do it next week. And by then, the prices will have gone up on it. I'm still going to buy that air conditioner. Just, just get I'm one go- from Korea. It's, it's just I'm going to be a little lighter. In my, uh, I think he's put some tariffs against Korea as well. Uh, no, I think he lifted, and he and he's lifting the tariffs against the steel tariffs and so forth against Mexico and Canada, uh, because they've come to an agreement. But you know, we'll see if the Congress uh, votes in the new uh, NAFTA, whatever it's called. It's got some different initials: uh, Mexican Canada uh, yeah. Agreement. And you know, and if they stifle that, then that's going to hurt the United States, and it's going to hurt Canada. And it's going to hurt Mexico. But when I okay, have, en- 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 enough of that. Enough when you have enough, product enough that's it. made I'm getting, in China, I'm getting ahead. And it's Phil. tariff. I'm getting ahead. Okay. Phil. I'm okay. Getting, but if if the yeah, then yeah, as a yeah. consumer, I can choose whether I buy that one or or I buy the Phil, uh, Phil, American made one China's that in, doesn't have the what tariff. What if America doesn't make that product? Then they better start. Well, oh really? Yeah. And who who's going to make that product in the United States? Who, uh, how do you force people to make a product? You don't force them. They see an opportunity. That's the whole thing. Business is you find oh, really? you find really? an opportunity mm-hmm. and you fill it. You you really. What difference does it make if you, if we pay the tariff on American made products because the price has gone up to encourage Americans to make it? Or if we no. pay the tariff on oh, the and, and by the way, no, Phil, the, those the American-made products will have a tariff on them when they try to sell to China or any other country. Right, but we sell $50 billion a year to China. They sell us $500 billion a year. So uh, it, it's a very unequal amount of money. Plus, the tariff... Yeah, but but you can't, you can't, you can't force it to equalize itself. The, the, it, we are now, That's what Trump what, what, what Trump fails to understand, because Trump is a lousy businessman. He He's a terrible, program. terrible businessman. And he hey, doesn't you understand... Mistakes. Can I talk? Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, but you're saying uh, forget it. Forget you know, it. I'm not going to talk you're anymore. Accusing about this. him of being not, a terrible I'm, business. He's man. a terrible businessman. Yes, right. I'm not well, accusing him. Time. It's been proven. Well, you know, you, it's you, been if proven. You're continue to condemn a guy. Uh, how about uh, all those bankruptcies, Phil? Come on, a great businessman. Another what about? Uh, no, so, this isn't a whataboutism. The whataboutism okay, is something that's a reality. Them. I'm not comparing it to something else, which is a whataboutism. I'm saying, what about the times he's gone bankrupt? You know, okay, good I'll, business I'll people don't go back. Huh? Uh, the, uh, Thomas uh, Edison. I, I'm tired of this. I'm Th- really no, tired listen of this. to this. Thomas okay. Edison, when he went to invent the light bulb, uh, he, uh, and it finally was a success, what ended up, oh, are you going to take your ball and glove and bat? And uh, I'm not looking anymore. Uh, so uh, anyway, when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, he was asked, how did you persevere when you had uh, a thousand experiments that didn't work? Uh, yeah, OK. Uh, but uh, this is interesting stuff. I don't anyway, care. I'm Ed- not going to get any kind of economics lecture from you, Phil. Well. Uh, Edison said, this is not economics, but Edison said, I had a thousand experiments that mm-hmm. didn't fail. They just didn't work. And in once yeah, yeah. He, and, and he was also a crook as well. He stole a lot of his inventions. All right. All right. But, so I'm not going to listen to Thomas but Edison. But he perfected the light bulb. Oh, that was it. Yeah. And, and, and I was saying it took a thousand experiments. Are you sure he's the only one that, you sure he's the only one that perfected the light bulb? Well... No, but uh, oh, okay. He was a fucking. He, with he, he he used other people's uh, uh, brilliance, okay, and those that didn't go along with his brilliance were th- uh, thrown under the rug. I, I mean, don't like Steve Jobs. Uh, no, I mean when you talk about electricity, uh, he was in a big fight over AC versus DC, and mm. uh, tried with to throw Tesla? Uh, Tesla under the bus, and in fact managed to, for the most part, by electrocuting an. Ele- Electrocuting a uh, an elephant. Mm-hmm. You know that one? No. No. Oh, well, what he did was to prove how AC was bad. He used AC and electrocuted an elephant to death, th- as an example. And then, uh, to in- uh, make it even worse, he went out and invented the electric chair so that people could be killed by AC electricity. Hey, that was a good seller. Yeah, well, it didn't work. 
What do we use today? Well, that's because it was too uh, grueling. And uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. What do you mean? What was too grueling? I'm saying the, what, the electric. No, chair. no. What now I'm saying is no. I'm saying more humane. AC AC ruled humane. out in spite of all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Did we did, well, we did, still use a lot of DC. Oh no, you don't. Sure, the, the, the uh, phone lines are DC. The, uh, the phone uh, lines aren't uh, DC. Low, low, yeah, phone, low, uh, we don't low have, uh, no. voltage is DC. Uh, Phil, you know, Phil, we don't use DC. You know why yeah, we don't? Yeah, we convert from AC. You to know DC. why we don't use DC? Direct current, yeah. Yeah, because it can't be distributed as far. You have to build the power stations much closer to the last yeah. power station in order to make DC work. And that's why it was finally thrown out and, and uh, Edison lost the battle. Yeah. yeah. But Edison was a fucking crook. Well, it's still the story about... But he was a genius. Attempts, huh? Yeah, he was genius. His story about his 1,000 attempts to perfect the light bulb or to get it to work... Not yeah, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's a true story. Well, I've, and, I've made a thousand attempts to make this show work, and I still haven't made it work. Well, you got to persevere. You know, if you give up, you fail. We've come and, close the nights you haven't been on, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, that, that's because you get, well, you would think you get these snowflakes that won't call in, that don't want to hear uh, uh, something that isn't uh, to their thinking. You know, they, they don't want to hear, they don't want to hear anything from anybody else uh, except Antifada and uh, the rest of them. Yeah, a couple of people have written on our uh, chat room here, which I never <clears throat> uh, said, but Jesus, Phil, admit you heard uh, this BS on Rush and Sean's show and stop lying. No, it was, uh, uh, it was um, it, it, C-SPAN. Matt, Matt Crash writes, Obama saved the country from total economic disaster. How do you answer that one? Yeah, what he did was he created mm -hmm. uh, more government jobs so that he could put people to work. And all he did, uh, he drove up the, uh, the deficit by several trillion dollars. He didn't dollars. drive it up, he drove it down. It was $15 trillion when Bush left office. It was nineteen trillion. When do you know what it is? You know what it is now, Phil. Twenty-one, twenty-two. He drove it down to six hundred billion in his eight years. I don't know where you get that statistic. Less than half. What do you mean? That's history. Google. Because it's nine. It was nineteen trillion when he left office. I'm not talking about the fifteen to nineteen. Of course, you can't stop a locomotive in two inches. And so in the in the two years. And in the two years that uh, that Trump took over, he's still paying Obama's deficits. We're paying it. He jacked it back up. It's over a trillion yeah. dollars Megan again. Be it was six hundred billion when he took office. Well, Megan Belknap just million. wrote. Why? Why? why it, Ma Trump Megan, has made the deficit go up. Ma Megan Belkamp just wrote. Belknap wrote rather. Why does Why does Phil have to take over the entire program? Uh, because she doesn't call. If you, if well, Megan if, Belkamp, if she call, you'd her, have another person to interrupt. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, she's a newbie. I wouldn't interrupt. I mean, do you think that a lot of people feel they can join in on the conversation when you go on one of these nonstop uh, defenses of Trump? Yeah. Well, you go on a nonstop attack. So I mean, Kevin, do you feel like you can jump in at any moment when he's going? I try, but yeah, if like you listen. You'll see that if somebody starts talking, I shut up. Oh no! Oh no, Phil. Oh yeah. Oh no. I'm very respectful. How many? How many of you here would disagree with Phil on that one? Raise your hand. That's like yeah. asking Kelly Conway if Trump banged his hand on the desk. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him if he banged Kelly Conway on the desk. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, her husband uh, isn't too happy with Trump. Maybe he is. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Um, anyway, I uh, uh, there was another story that I wanted to bring up here because I was going to bring it up right after the uh, Mario Batali story, and that is uh, someone else who got caught up in the Me Too movement assaults on him, and that was actor Jeffrey Rush. Who's that? Uh, who's that? He's an actor, Phil. Don't you see movies? Yeah, but I don't know who he is. What's he? What's he been in? Caribbean. 
It was in, in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, he won an Academy Award, his best actor, years ago. Uh, but anyway, um, Jeffrey Rush was just awarded 2.9 million Australian dollars, or more than 1.9 million U.S. dollars, in his defamation lawsuit against the Sydney newspaper publisher and journalist. Rush successfully sued the Daily Telegraph for defamation after it published allegations of abuse towards the co towards a co-star during a production of King Lear in Sydney between 2015 and 2016. The Australian newspaper reported Rush had inappropriately touched the co-star's breasts and back, followed her into a bathroom, and sent her an inappropriate text message, accusations which the actor denied. Last month, federal court judge uh, Wigney ruled the paper had been extravagant and reckless in its reporting. Commenting on the two articles about Rush, Wigley said this was a recklessly irresponsible piece of sensational journalism of the worst kind. So somebody, Shine was the picture he won the Academy Award for. He'd been th nominated three other times and forgotten totally by Phil Meyer. Uh, I, I didn't see that one either. He was in Shakespeare in Love and The King's didn't Speech and Quills. Didn't uh, see any of them. You didn't see any of them. Well, you just I didn't, didn't even know they existed. Oh, that's because they're good movies. And you okay. watch Longmire. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Longmire's a good show. Yeah, yeah a, I like Longmire. I watched it, and I fell asleep in the middle of it. So I can't, uh, can't tell you, you know. But I think it's about time some of these people started fighting this Me Too stuff about them because it just got to be almost a fad for a while and a lot of careers were destroyed on insinuation and I, I don't know if that's right you know um, anybody have a comment about that I guess not no looks like it was silent majority there so I, I was uh, waiting for somebody else because I didn't want to jump in oh well, Meanwhile, so you get crickets uh, when uh -huh. when you ask a question. Yes, I don't... right. Okay, right. Well, we not got... every time. Well, this time. Just this, yeah, one time. Uh, well, you see, it's a show. You're supposed to not leave dead air. You know? Well, we've got 20 minutes left. I suppose I could get Damien to come in and do a whole show. Sure. Uh because uh, towards the end of the show, 20 minutes is an awfully long time. Yeah. yeah. You know? I listened to Damien tonight. I, I, I still well, you, well, they, Damien saw wasn't, well, Damien wasn't Damien wasn't there tonight. Oh, they, they were talking about uh, yeah. the... Yeah, no, uh, that was last night's show. Oh. Well, it was on the feed. Oh. Yeah. That was when SG was... Oh. And then SG was trying to call a show that wasn't taking calls at the moment. And I finally oh. had to turn off Skype in order to keep him from calling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's not a bad thing to do. You, you well, know, I you mean, know, you don't want to take a call. Well, and no, Skype yeah, is well, not. Well, you is know not what? I, you I'll tell you what I hate about but about this Skype is that it used to be that I could turn this, you know, turn it off so you couldn't call me, and I can't yeah. do that now. I can be on do. I just found out I can be on do not disturb, or I can be well, on invisible. Wrong. No, there's nothing wrong, and you can still call me. Well, why do they have the green thing, the red thing? Yeah, well, and, because, yeah. but you can, and the yellow if thing. you see me red sometime, try calling me. It'll ring. Well, I saw you red uh, just before the show. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And if you had called me at that point, you would have gotten through. Well, that's because I'm rung persistent. Here. It would, no, it would have <laughs> rung here. That's what's wrong with it. You have to completely get rid of Skype. You know, wow. I could have it sitting here waiting and put it on, you know, do not, Do not disturb, disturb or whatever, and, and not worry about it. But instead, I've got SG ringing, and he's ringing because he isn't listening to the program and can't tell that we're not uh, uh, doing something else. And Skype, can you, you can turn off the ringer. I know you like having it on to see when the first I one's calling. I can't turn but... off the ringer on the first ring. Oh. In fact, I will look here, okay? Yeah. Audio or can and video you make appearance. it a tone that isn't as disturbing? General. I keep saying, ring, ha, ha, ha. Appearance. I don't need an appearance. Audio, video. No, that doesn't. Unmute incoming calls. No. Ring for additional device. No. Messaging. Notifications. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. I have no place to turn it off. There was some place I turned off uh, ringing. 
uh, yeah, notification yeah. sounds. Yeah, I turned uh, off notification sounds. But uh, even with that turned yeah. off, uh, the uh, first one. Wait, 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 wait. What? Charlene. Charlene asleep? I, no, I heard Phil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I heard him. <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, what happens is uh, you can turn it off, and it's turned yeah. off. But the first call does make a, a ringing sound. Yeah. Okay. Everything after that, no. All yeah. right. Uh, uh, can you turn down the volume of it? Uh, no. All right. Well, you know, I mean, I'm a, I, I don't figure that most of you are as non-caring as SG, and you do listen to the program and see when it's time to call. Mm -hmm. You know, you do listen to see if, I oh, hey. wait until you say I'm opening the Skype. Line. He's yeah. interviewing somebody. And unfortunately, when I have that open, which is where I play the video of Ronnie, it also has the Skype on it. So when he rang, it kept ringing in the middle of that interview. Yeah. And, if he, and then was he doesn't he, call during the show. And then he doesn't call during the show, of course. You know, fucking yeah. piece of shit. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You got a you got a way of endearing yourself to. Uh, I don't give callers. a shit. No, no. I, Shut up, Phil. Why, why, why should I endear myself to him? I don't want him calling. Okay, you know, at least not not when he doesn't. You know, it, it doesn't care about the show. So you know, it's just his own ego that is in play. Uh, yeah, there's different levels of caring. You know. Yeah, yeah. There's different levels of caring. Uh, one of which is somebody giving you a blowjob, but I'm not going to suggest that from SG. But that's sex. <laughs> that's sex. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, uh, let, let's look at the, uh, and I, I, I'd like to ask uh, Kevin this and Jeff this and Charlene this and uh, Charlie this. Matt, don't uh, answer Phil. I'm that leaving Phil out of this. Uh, right now, uh, who are you looking at as the presidential nominees are lining up for attention? Uh, Kevin, who do you like? Anybody out there you like? Way too early. You say it's way too early, and There's too many to pick from, but I don't know. Buttigieg is kind of, I like his style. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, I think a lot of them should be get out of the way oh yeah you know they're all gonna a bunch I mean, of them are gonna drop off like real quick i mean who's your top five well my 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 top one is Buttigieg. okay i think this guy could really take trump on and not let him get away with shit and do it in a very distinguished manner okay and with a lot of dignity uh i think um my second choice for, now, this is only to beat Trump, not that I like him particularly, all right? But if we consider that the job of the Democratic nominee is to beat Trump, then we have to pick people who are capable of beating Trump. Uh, and and uh, my second choice then in that case would be Biden. Yep. Uh, because Biden speaks to the common man. He goes into places like Pitts, you know, Pennsylvania, and, and can speak to the people there. He's uh, very much a, you know, a common man kind of guy. Uh, uh, third, I may be, you know, there is no third in my mind. There are only about two people I think could beat Trump. And that's either Biden or Buttigieg. I think that, uh, uh, what's it, Elizabeth Warren is very intelligent, has some great ideas, articulates well. <coughs> But that never got you elected. You, you don't know. think Harris could uh, uh, do the Kamala job? Kamala Harris, I, I, she's she's good, she's okay, but she's not capable of getting into a good down and dirty fight with uh, Trump. And Trump's going to play it dirty. Okay. Yeah. What? De Blasio? <laughs> never. Never. <laughs> I don't even know why he's fucking running. I mean, I, it just yeah, makes no joke. huh? It makes no sense to me. But most yeah, of these I, I just don't understand. All of these people's position is, I don't like Trump. Vote for me so you don't get Trump. Well, do, but not, do, do the remember. Only one that is making a, the only one that's making a position on, on uh, and not worrying about Trump, and just saying, if you vote for me and I, and I win, then I'll be president, is Andrew Yang. And Andrew Yang oh, actually has Yang hasn't a got a fucking chance. Not okay. true. Not 
Uh, yeah. sure. Go, when yeah. he gets, he'll be on the big boy stage. Yes, Charlie. What, what, mm. Charlie? He may not be on the big boy stage. Charlie? He's got his uh, it's not true that Andrew Yang's the only one that's doing it. Elizabeth Warren has given more positions on more issues than all the other candidates combined. She's got a plan for everything. Mm. She's, she's spoiled, uh, you know, over this D, uh, DNA thing. Uh, she, oh, she, 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 she's, uh, she's tainted. Cut off your nose to spite your face. She's tainted. She's Nobody's only, she's only tainted momentarily, Phil. Okay. Once we get into the heat of things, it's what she has to say and how people respond to that. Yes. Uh, but I, I, I'm afraid that the problem is, is that this whole thing is primary. And I don't think I trust the people to make the right judgment as to who would be the person who could beat, uh, beat Trump. And that is the object here, Phil, no matter what you want to say. The object is to beat Trump. And it has to be somebody who knows how to take him on mano a mano or woman a mano, you know? So and, is, the, is the DNC coming up with uh, double stamps for delegates? You know, uh, not only super delegates, but real super delegates uh, in order to get the guy uh, uh, on the ticket, that I don't. They want. I don't know what they're doing this time. But all I know is, is that I don't want to see the Democrats make a mistake. How do you feel about that, Kevin? Do you think they're? Do you think the Democrats are capable of actually coming up with a decent candidate? It's a tough one, but yeah, I think so. Really? Well, they, they had Hillary last time. No. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, there's somebody in there. I mean, obviously. Biden or, or Buttigieg and there's going to be three or four of them in there that are going to be halfway decent you put somebody in there with the socialist views of those guys or Bernie Sanders and this is going to be another well, that's, uh, why Buttigieg, that's why Buttigieg is such a good idea he's not really a socialist right. in nature yes well, uh, Jeff he's not I, I, I can't make a decision on anyone until I hear these people talk one-on-one -on -one or or against 10 people whatever and the debates yeah and there's a debate otherwise it's it's just not a good uh a good method of making those decisions jeff did you listen to any of those town halls that uh, the different networks had yeah a little bit of it didn't somebody the other night get a standing ovation at Fox? Yeah, that was Buttigieg. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it was Buttigieg, yeah. It was Buttigieg. I think most of the people that were on the Fox thing uh, got uh, ovations. No, standing, uh, a standing ovation. Nobody yeah, else got it. Bernie did, too. Bernie did? Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, Buttigieg got one on the fact that he just didn't give a shit what Trump was saying. You know, when they ask him straight up, you know, he's going they're going to tear you apart. He's going to tear you up and he's going to call you names. And basically, he just sat there and said, you know, I don't care. I wonder if there was <laughs> like, do you think there was some invited audience uh, for those uh, town halls that they maybe stacked the audience a little bit? That at Fox? You know, the guy, w yeah, at Fox, that they weren't going to. Uh, you, you know, the judge says, hey, I got tickets for if my If they people. were going to stack them at Fox, it would seem to me they'd be stacking they it stack the, other the other way. way. Well, yeah. they, well, no, no, that's if Fox was in control of who was in the audience. Well, but yeah, and you notice that uh, that night that uh, Trump was over there blasting Fox for going the other way, too, right? Yeah. Now yeah. now he's not their friend, just like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, what the hell is his, what was the Secretary of Defense? What's his name? Uh, uh, Joe uh, 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 t t uh, the one that he likes so much and then kicked out, and now he, he, Tillerson. He Tillerson. Tillerson. Uh, yeah. Call I'm him still a box thinking of rocks Gates. Today. Yeah. What did? He, what was he calling him today? He called him a box of rocks today. And, yeah. You know, a year and a half, two years ago, he was the greatest thing since uh, yeah. you know. What? What? What is the compelling thing that Trump has to start calling people who are gone? You know, they're out the door. Calling they them names. It. Calling they them names. They showed it on TV. You know, they show him four or five, six clips about how the how he's so great. And then last night, the shit that he's saying on Twitter about how he's dumb as a box of rocks and he's an idiot and the, why he even, you know, why he shouldn't even have been in that position and blah blah blah. He hired the guy. Yeah, but I mean, I don't understand what 
the thinking is in in being uh that's what I'm looking for. In being in just being insulting to people Vindictive. who haven't been around for years. He's a bully. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I agree that Trump is a bully. Uh, you know, uh, nobody's <laughs> perfect. Well, why not just fire him and let him go and not say nothing and leave it alone? Uh, that's just not what bullies but do. But don't we really want the most perfect person we can find or assume is the most perfect person we can find to be president? There are no perfect people. You know, kids are kids are learning government today, like my daughter, and they're looking at the presidency now and going, "What the hell?" You know, you know forty. Well, percent. my question is, my question is, when I was growing up, did we have a wrong impression about the presidency? You know, and whether when I was growing up, I was looking at people like Kennedy. Mm -hmm. When he was growing up, he was looking at Martin well, Van Buren. Well, but I'm wondering, I'm well. wondering if, you know, we always had this, this attitude that the president was something hallowed and terrific and wonderful and, uh, and whatever. Respected. Uh, yeah. You and, mean Camelot? And, and, and probably, no, forget yeah. Camelot. Go, the, back, to, go back to Eisenhower. Go back to Truman, you know. I mean, the whole idea was that he was the president, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, I think maybe we, we were given a false impression of how much we should respect these people. But on yeah. the other hand, on the other hand, we've gone completely the other direction. And kids are growing mm. up today having no respect for the presidency because the president they've got can't be respected. The and at the end of the day, part. even the first couple of weeks of this presidency, I still said to myself, OK, he's the president. we got to respect the office. And then all shit broke loose. Years ago, I interviewed a guy named Ashley Montague. He was an anthropologist, and he wrote a book called The Elephant Man, which I incidentally got the rights to. Uh, and, we, and we tried to push it around Hollywood for a movie, and nobody would take the idea, so we gave up on it. Uh, but I, I, had the the, I had the rights to it. I am not ugly. Yeah. But anyway, I, I asked him, how do we judge beauty? And he says, beauty is usually judged by the people who are in power. In fact, the, the way in which we operate and the way in which we relate to one another and the way we treat each other is based upon that person who is in power. And the fact is we've got a president here who is not a good example of how we should anybody should be acting. And that's the terrible part about it, and he's a terrible example to the children of America. You know, you had mentioned uh, Truman. Now that kind of that kind of resounded with you, Phil. You 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 paused there for a moment. Uh, well, you know, if he does wear long ties, and uh, but Truman, for instance, uh, when you had said that Trump was a failed businessman, you know, Truman was a failed businessman too. His hardware. He was store, a haberdasher. He was not a hardware. No, he store. had a hardware. No, store. he was a hat. He had his hat store like Tony. Uh, but he uh, he had business problems, too, didn't he? Not once he became a, a senator, I think. I think was he a senator? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But uh, when he was in private life, he had problems. You know, people have problems. Not, you know, sometimes oh. you got to fail in order to know how to oh, succeed. Yeah, but that's not the point I'm making here, Phil. It's not even what I was saying. I was talking about no, the I fact... Was what, what I was, I was talking about is the tone of a nation is set by somebody like the President of the United States. The civility we, we, we engender, the way we do business, the way we react to each other, how we treat each other, the, the, the tone is set in the White House. Do you think that Trump would be the way he is if he wasn't constantly being attacked yes. by the Democrats? Yes, because he was always that way before he was President. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was that way as a businessman. Do you no. think the country would be as aggressive as it is right now if it wasn't for our leadership i don't think it would be as aggressive right now if it wasn't for the media and, and well the media projects what the what the leadership projects no and, and you have you have a congress that's trying to stifle him and and, and not allow him to get through the uh, legislation that that he wanted no, to. No, they're well, willing to work with him. they walked into congress. his office the other day ready to work for him and he wasn't ready to work with them yeah, uh, he didn't and have... he works for us. Remember that. Well, apparently well, he doesn't, Kevin. 
Apparently no. <laughs> that. Apparently you're living in a dream world. Okay. I'm sorry, stupid me. Let me wake yeah. back up. Yeah. It's about time. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, well, Charlene woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Ah, there's the theme. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Uh, uh, Charlene, got any last words for us? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm oh. gonna go. You got to go pee. But it's midnight in her area. I got to go pee. That's what what she's saying. That's what she mm-hmm. said. Anyway, hey, listen, thank you, Phil. Appreciate it in spite of everything. Jeff, thank yeah. you. Thank you to Charlie. Yeah. Kevin, thank you. And Charlene, thank you. If all of you give a big wave goodbye, I'll wave back at you. And uh, we'll uh, we'll say goodbye to uh, the uh, uh, citizens panel. There they go, folks. Let me uh, turn them off here. I could, how do I turn them off? Oh, I know, I can just uh, show them my penis. No, uh, that's, uh, that's it for our citizen panel, and that's all she wrote for tonight. Uh, we're, uh, we're back again, uh, let's see here. Well, next is Jack Bishop, let me say that, with the, uh, uh, with the intersection. And uh, tomorrow night at, uh, at 9.30, Damien will be here with the exchange. He wasn't here tonight because he had a, a root canal. But he should be fine by tomorrow. I did the show one night with my tooth just pulled. Oh, well. Anyway, because it, it, I, I was brought up in a culture that said, hey, you got to do a radio program no matter what shape you're in. And you noticed I do that. Anyway, listen, stay tuned next for The Intersection. Jack Bishop, uh, I'll be back again tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.